Krishna having some real technical difficulties Yeah, today. this is the fourth time and it might be the final. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, yeah, some things, are, as they say, just not meant to be. So yeah. it's, I'll just do a sound check. Hare Krishna. Right. Canto 2, Chapter 5, Text 25. So, yeah, here we go. <laughs> From the darkness of the false ego, the first of the five elements, namely the sky, is generated. Its subtle form is the quality of sound, exactly as the seer is in relationship with the scene. Popo. The five elements, namely sky, air, um, fire, water and earth, are all but different qualities of the darkness of false ego. This means that the false ego in the sum total form of Mahatattva is generated from the marginal potency of the Lord. And due to this false ego of lording it over the material creation, ingredients are generated for the false enjoyment of the living being. The lighting so nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Practically speaking, the living being is the dominating factor over the material elements as the enjoyer, though the background is the Supreme Lord. Factually, save and accept the Lord, no one can be called the enjoyer, but the living entity falsely desires to become the enjoyer. This is the origin of false ego. When the bewildered living being desires this, the shadow elements are generated by the will of the Lord and the living entities are allowed to run after them as after a phantasmagoria. <coughs> Well, wow, what an amazing explanation of the development of the elements from the desire of the living entity to enjoy. So we're getting into the section now where the uh, the uh, creation is being described and the uh, construct of the elements. And they start with um, from the darkness of false ego. So first comes false ego. And uh, that's the first of the five elements, namely sky, uh, is generated. So from false ego, sky is generated, and its subtle form is the quality of sound, um, exactly as the seer is in relationship with the scene. So um, where there is ether, and that's the same as sky, there's sound and the two go together like the seer and whatever the, is being seen. They're kind of together like that. And that is generated from false ego. So yeah, just, it's nice to keep, uh, keep continuity here. So this, we're still in that purport. It's quite a long one. Uh, it is said that first the tan mantra, or sorry, tan matra, sound is created and then the sky and in this verse it is confirmed that actually it is so but sound is the subtle form of sky and the distinction is like that between the seer and the seen the sound is the representation of the actual object as the sound produced sorry yeah as the sound produced speaking of the ob as the sound produced speaking of the object gives an idea of the description of the object powerful therefore sound is the subtle characteristic of the object very powerful similarly sound representation of the lord in terms of his characteristics is the complete form of the Lord, as was seen by Va Vasudev and Maharaj Dasharat, the fathers of Lord Krishna and Lord Ram. The sound representation of the Lord is non different from the Lord himself, because the Lord and his representation in the sound, in sound, are absolute knowledge. Lord Chaitanya has instructed us that in the holy name of the Lord, as sound representation of the Lord, all the potencies of the Lord are invested. Thus, one can immediately enjoy the association of the Lord by the pure vibration of the sound representation of His holy name. 
and the concept of the Lord is immediately manifested before the pure devotee. A pure devotee, therefore, is not aloof from the Lord even for a moment. The holy name of the Lord, as recommended in the Shastras, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, may therefore be constantly chanted by the devotee aspiring to be constantly in touch with the Supreme Lord. One who is thus able to associate with the Lord is sure to be delivered from the darkness of the created world, which is a product of false ego. Tamasi ma jyotir gama. Uh, verses 26 to 29. Because the sky is transformed, the air is generated with the quality of touch, and by previous succession, the air is also full of sound and the basic principles of duration of life, sense perception, mental power and bodily strength. When the air is transformed in course of time and nature's course, fire is generated, taken shape with the sense of touch and sound. Since fire is also transformed, there is a manifestation of water, full of juice and taste. As previously, it also has form and touch and is also full of sound. And water, being transformed from all variegatedness on earth, appears odorous and as previously, and as previously becomes qualitative full, qualitatively full of juice, touch, sound and form, respectively. So now basically the other four elements are being created. Mm. Pop, pop. The whole process of creation is an act of gradual evolution and development from one element to another, reaching up to the variegatedness of the earth as so many trees, plants, mountains, rivers, reptiles, birds, <coughs> animals and varieties of human beings. The quality of sense perception is also evolutionarily evolutionary namely generated from sound and then touch and from touch to form. Taste and odour are also generated along with the gradual development of sky, air, fire, water and earth. They are all mutually the cause and effect of one another, but the original cause is the Lord himself in his plenary portion as Maha Vishnu, lying in the causal water of the Mahatattva. As such, Lord Krishna is described in the Brahma Samhita as the cause of all causes. And this is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 10 8 as follows. Aham sarvasya prabhago mata sarvam pravata te iti matva bhajanti mam buddha baba samasita. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. The qualities of sense perception are fully represented in the earth and they are manifested in other elements to a lesser extent. In the sky there is sound only, whereas in the air there are sound and touch. In fire there is sound, touch and shape or form. And in the water there is taste also along with the other perceptions, namely sound, touch, and shape. In the earth, however, there are all the above-mentioned qualities with an extra development of odor also. Therefore, on the earth, there is a full display of variegatedness of life, which is originally started with the basic principle of what says air. I think that means ether. Diseases of the body take place due to the derangement of air within the earthly body of the living beings. Mm. Mental diseases result from special derangement of the air within the body. And as such, yogic exercises, exercise is especially beneficial to keep the air in order so that diseases of the body become almost nil by such exercises. 
when they are properly done, the duration of life also increases, and one can have control over death also by such practices. A perfect yogi can have command over death and quit the body at the right moment when he is competent to transfer himself to a suitable planet. The bhakti yogi, however, surpasses all the yogis because by dint of his devotional service, he is promoted to the region beyond the material sky and is placed in one of the planets in the spiritual sky by the supreme will of the Lord, the controller of everything. Mm -hmm. Text 30. Well, from there's the... a lot in there. Let's see. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so an interesting point is the reason why Earth is so gross and dense and out of all of them are air ether is very very subtle air is less subtle F fire um subtle water more gross and earth is the grossest because it contains all the other elements so that's why and then also there's a point um Interesting about how, about the air being disturbed, which causes disease, and how yoga can basically sort that out. So we often hear how pranayama is, is very good for health um, and can resolve many, many issues. So just balancing the life air within the body on which <laughs> the, the spirit soul is meant to be s mm. like sitting or resting. Um, can help greatly. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> From the mode of goodness, the mind is generated and becomes manifest, as also the ten demigods controlling the bodily movements. Such demigods are known as the controller of the directions, the controller of the air, the sun god, the runa, the ashwini kumaras, the fire god, the king of heaven, the worshipful deity in heaven, the chief of the Adityas and Brahmaji, the Prajapati, all come into existence. Vaikarika is a neutral stage of creation and Tejas is the initiative of creation, while Tamas is the full display of material creation under the spell of the darkness of ignorance. Manufacture of the necessities of life in factories and workshops is excessively prominent in the age of Kali or in the age of the machine is the summit stage of the quality of goodness. Such manufacturing enterprises by human society are in the mode of darkness because factually there is no necessity for the commodities manufactured. Human society primarily requires food for subsistence, shelter for sleeping, defence for protection and commodities for satisfaction of the senses. The senses are the practical signs of life, as will be explained in the next verse. Human civilization is meant for purifying the senses and objects of sense gratification. And objects of sense gratification should be supplied satisfaction as, or gratification. Uh, satisfaction should be supplied as much as absolutely required, but not for aggravating artificial sensory needs. Food, shelter, defence. De and sense gratification are all needs in material existence. Otherwise, in his pure uncontaminated state of original life, the living entity has no such needs. The needs are therefore artificial, and in the pure state of life, there are no such needs. As such, increasing the artificial needs, as is the standard of material civilization, or advancing the economic development of human society, is a sort of engagement in darkness without knowledge. By such engagement, human society is spoiled because human, human society, human energy, energy. I'm low on energy. <laughs> <laughs> because human energy is primarily meant for purifying the senses in order to engage them in satisfying the senses of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord, being the supreme possessor of spiritual senses, is the master of the senses. 
Hari Krishna. <coughs> Rishi Krishna. Ah, Hari Krishna. Ah, Hari Krishna. Rishi Krishna. Rishi Krishna means the senses, and Isha means the master. The Lord is not the servant of the senses, or in other words, he is not directed by the dictation of the senses. But the conditioned souls or the individual living entities are servants of the senses. They are conducted by the direction or dictation of the senses and therefore material civilization is a kind of engagement in sense gratification only. The standard of human civilization should be to cure the disease of sense gratification and one can do this simply by becoming an agent for satisfying the spiritual senses of the Lord. The senses are never to be stopped in their engagements, but one should purify them by engaging them in the pure service of sense gratification of the master of the senses. This is the instruction of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. Arjuna first of all Arjuna wanted first of all to satisfy his own senses. By his decision not to fight with his kinsmen and friends. But Lord Sri Krishna taught him, the Bhagavad Gita, just to purify Arjuna's decision for sense gratification. Therefore, Arjuna agreed to satisfy the sense of the Lord, and thus he fought the battle of Kurukshetra as the Lord desired. The, I thought it was interesting, it said, the senses are never to be stopped in their engagements. But one should purify them by engaging them in the pure service of sense gratification. Sorry, one should purify them by engaging them in the pure service of sense gratification of the master of the senses. This is the instruction of the whole Bhagavad Gita. That's pretty powerful. So what does that mean? It means that you don't stop the senses or try to re withdraw the senses or, or retract them, but you actually have to engage the senses in the service of the Lord of the senses. Rishikeshi, Rishikesh, Rishikesh. What is that verse? Sarvo padivinir muktan tat paratvena nirmalam rishikeni rishikesh in the and bhakti uchite. That we can get rid of all the upadis. Um, sarvopadi, veneer muktam. Get rid of all of them by engaging in devotional service. Like that. So I will um, carry on reading. The Vedas instruct us to get out of the existence of darkness and go forward on the path of light. Tamasima Jyotir Gama. We said that earlier. The path of light is therefore to satisfy the senses of the Lord. Misguided men or less intelligent men follow the path of self-realization without any attempt to satisfy the transcendental senses of the Lord. <clears throat> Mis, uh, sorry, tra satisfy the transcendental senses of the Lord by following the path shown by Arjuna and other devotees of the Lord. On the contrary, they artificially try to stop the activities of the senses, yoga system, or they deny the transcendental senses of the Lord, jnana system. The devotees, however, are above the yogis and jnanis because pure devotees do not deny the senses of the Lord. They want to satisfy the senses of the Lord. Only because of the darkness of ignorance do the yogis and the jnanis deny the senses of the Lord and thus artificially try to control the activities of the diseased senses. Hmm. In the diseased condition of the senses, there is too much engagement of the senses in increasing material needs. When one comes to see the disadvantage of aggravating the sense activities, one is called the jnani. And when one tries to stop the activities of the senses by the practice of yogic principles, he is called a jogi. But when one is fully aware of the transcendental senses of the Lord and tries to satisfy the senses, one is called the devotee of the Lord. 
The devotees of the Lord do not try to deny the senses of the Lord, nor do they artificially stop the actions of the senses. But to do voluntarily to but they do voluntarily engage the purified senses in the service of the master of the senses, as was done by Arjuna, thereby easily attaining the position sorry, easily attaining the perfection of satisfying the Lord, the ultimate goal of all perfection. Hare Krishna. Yeah, that's a mouthful, huh? Yes. <laughs> so we're going to leave it there. Okay. No, only because I'm kind of, you know... Time, yeah. i got to go back to the temple and cook for the Lord, so... And we have to go and be guests. Okay, so... Thank you all very much. Remember, we have copies of the Srimad Bhagavatam. The month of December is coming, and it is an amazing month. Wonderful opportunity to sponsor some yes. books and distribute them. You can hold that book up so everyone can see it nice and big. So anyone who would like to participate and sponsor some books, you can please get in touch with us. Um, we are happy to, uh, to share them with you. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, <laughs> Grantaraj Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Jai.